How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and over the last 24 months, I've done five different projects sealing up cracks in concrete or expansion joints in concrete with three different products and using a few different techniques. Now, some of those videos had a few skeptics, especially this one with a large crack where I used a pool noodle as a backer rod, or one at my house that I use great stuff to hold up the sidewalk. So let's go through the good and the bad across these four or five different examples to make sure you can quickly get the lessons learned and pick the right product and technique for your application at home. So first up is one of the newest examples, but it is also one of the most extreme. You can see some of these gaps are well over two inches and approaching three inches in width. I used Tremco's product, the Vulcan 45 SSL semi self leveler, and then custom cut that pool noodle as a backer rod to fill the gap. You can see I have quite a bit of flex with that pool noodle in there, but the Vulcan has really attached well to the concrete and still is providing a great seal. And even though we're still early days with this seal only being exposed to the elements for about four weeks, I'd say the 45 SSL is a real hero of this one. This pool noodle, almost three inch gap applications, a bit extreme to expect the sealant to hold up well when there's that much flex but it's passing with flying colors. Now I can assure you all the examples today are not gonna be all wins. I have made quite a few mistakes and let's jump over to the second one, which was another extreme example where I lifted a sidewalk an inch and three quarters and then supported it with this one part polyurethane great stuff foam. If you saw that video, you know you, I use C-clamps, some bottle jacks, some four by four posts. I lifted everything up and then drilled holes to spray great stuff foam below the sidewalk, filling in that gap and supporting the overall sidewalk. There are pro services that do poly jacking and then also mud jacking. Poly jacking usually uses a two part polyurethane foam and mud jacking is, is a slurry more like concrete that would be pressed down below. Now my results are a little mixed. Within about one day, the sidewalks went from completely level to the previously lower sidewalk sinking back down about three quarters of an inch. So the results are a bit mixed here. Now again, if we look at the Vulcan 45 semi self level of sealer with the sand on top, it looks great. It's bonding again. It's totally sealing up that crack. Now one thing I did learn from that is this had direct sunlight on it on about a 92 degree Fahrenheit day, and that is not ideal. You'll see these small bubbles forming if it's that hot. So what I would do is shade your sealant as it sets up, especially if it's that hot of a day in direct sunlight. So a little bit of mixed results on this one after that slab settled, although it's in much better shape than it was before the project, it's not completely flush, which is where we left the video at the end of that project. So for the Tremco, I do have one application that's about two years old. So let's go take a look at that one. So for the last example with the 45 SSL, this is on my driveway and it's a long expansion joint that I sealed up. Same thing, I sprinkled sand on top to help blend it in. And yes, I know I need to pressure wash this driveway and clean things up a bit, but it is holding up like a champ again, just like all the other applications, but this one's got a little bit more age on it. Last thing I'll note with the 45 SSL is that semi part, the semi self leveling. That means up to a 6% slope it will level and not run all to one side. So if you're getting a self-leveling product, which is the next one we'll talk about, it has to be perfectly level or that self-leveling is just gonna all flow to one side and definitely not gonna equal the product that you're looking for. So last one we'll really look at is about 24 months old. This is the oldest one in my first project that I was really sealing a gap and doing the prep work necessary to get a good product. Now this is a completely level surface between my garage and my driveway. So I used a self leveling product from Sika. I did not sprinkle sand on top, although it might look like it just because all the dirt build up over time. And also I did make a few mistakes. The first one is I had some gaps that were bigger than the backer rod to fill that in. You really want your backer rod to tightly press against the two sides of your concrete so it doesn't go anywhere. So what I had to do is I was braiding my backer rod together to get it wider. So I was putting a braid in there. Well, that has big gaps in it where the self level is really gonna settle out. And you're either gonna have to use a ton of product or if you have any gaps, the self level is actually gonna drain down and you're gonna have divots like I do. 
Also in one part, the backer rod kind of floated up a bit so you can actually see it through the ceiling. But like many of you, this was my first time so you just really don't know what you don't know and I made a few mistakes along the way and it kind of looks like it's my first attempt. So you want to get the correct size backer rod. In my area, really three quarters of inch is the biggest I can get in any home improvement store, but you can just order on Amazon. You'll see a link down in the description to a few different examples where you can get larger backer rod for your application. And then you really just want to set that backer rod down about a quarter of an inch where you want that finish surface of your sealant. And remember, if you're going to use a Sika product, which has held up really, really well, Make sure if it's a self leveler that you have a level surface or it's really going to equal a mess once it starts draining all to one side. So hopefully that helps you guys out. I know with a lot of these videos we finish up, everything looks perfect, but there's a big question mark of how long does this stuff actually last. So here's a few examples and I do plan on continuing to update you on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you will get the notification on those new videos and we can continue to learn together. Now one product I have used in a video in the past but I'm not really giving an update on is crack sticks. I love the idea of this product. It comes in these coils, you lay it down into a small crack, you heat it up and then it melts and seals off that crack. The problem is in the video I did is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit out and the concrete was simply too cold and it was pulling the heat out of that crack stick. So when it melted, it really didn't bond to the concrete. So for this one, I'm just saying it's not a fair shake and I need to try that product out when it's a little warmer out and the concrete isn't pulling the heat out of the crack stick and kind of sabotaging that bond to the surface. So I will be trying it again. I'll let you guys know how it turns out. So overall, taking all my experience into account, if I was gonna pick one sealant, it by far would be the Tremco Vulcan 45 SSL. Again, link in the description for your reference. And it's also on my Amazon store with all my other recommendations under the general supply section. Now, if you guys have a project and you really don't know the slope of your driveway, so you don't know, will I meet that 6% grade on the Tremco Vulcan 45 SSL, check out this video right here. I'll show you just using two stakes, a line between those two stakes, a small bubble level and a tape measure, how you can find that slope to make sure that product will actually fit your needs. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.